Well, continuing our focus on the fight against corruption and several revolutions just making the rounds. Let's go over to join uh, Chukuma Eziala, who is a legal practitioner. He joins us this morning from Abuja. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. It, lately, looking out, it, it does appear as though it's uh, one week, one revelation. Now we've seen another one making the rounds about uh, the arrest or the raid of the judges. From your perspective and how all of this is playing itself out, do you think that this will achieve the aim, which, of course, a fight against corruption to ensure that the judiciary has a better image of itself, read of corruption? I, th I think that uh, the judiciary is in a very serious trying moment in the country. Not just the judiciary, but Nigeria as a country is in a serious problem. And um, we now, at this stage, need to think through where do we start? What should be the role of various agencies in the government? What should be the role of NJC? What should be the role of various anti-corruption uh, parastatals and units we have in Nigeria? And um, uh, last time, uh, in some of the discussions and in some of the fora we have been involved in, or I have been involved in, I had made this, you know, advice. I said, for us to move forward, we have the three arms of government. We have the executive, we have the judiciary, and we have the legislature. We need to first focus what is the roadmap for curbing corruption, which all, I think 99% of Nigerians believe that corruption is the bane of Nigerian society. Even the most corrupt Nigerians believe that corruption is the problem with Nigeria. Now, the question is, do we have the will? Are we interested in fighting corruption? So these are the first issues. And we, today we have gone into the judiciary. Most of us lawyers know and are not happy with the state of the judiciary. We have this belief that the judiciary is corrupt, just like any other arm. The executive is more corrupt than any other arm. The legislature is also more corrupt than any other area you can look at. And you wouldn't actually leave out the judiciary because it is a product of the system. The judiciary as we have them today are products of the executive and the judiciary and the, the legislature. Because when you look at the appointing process, who are they appointing? From where are they appointing these people? So that is the state of the nation today. And uh, these people, the appointments started from the military <coughs> in the 90s. I mean, the people that are uh, occupying the seats today. Starting from the military in the 90s into the 2000s up to today. It is the executive and the legislature. At the NBA, we had always said, let us look at the real process of appointments. Who are you appointing? Are you appointing the corrupt people? Are you appointing the people that we know are relatively okay? I think that is the starting point, you know. Thank you. All right, let's um, take a broader look. The way, because I, I did hear you say, uh, are we ready or interested in fighting corruption? The way we're going about it now, because with particular reference to the raid on judges and this revelation is making the rounds, now we see the MBA saying, uh, those who are in the eye of the storm now, the judges, should actually step aside until trial is concluded. And we know in this country, when it has to do with people stepping aside, it's always an issue in different arms of government. Shouldn't this be something that should be addressed, wherein, wherever you are, if you're accused or you're facing this kind of scenario, whichever arm of government you are in, just as the suggestion is, you should step aside pending when the investigation or trial is concluded, then you can come back. Wouldn't that be a good way to start? You see, when a system is seen to be fair, 
then most of these suggestions can come in. Uh, our president has spoken. I, I would have preferred a situation where our president would have convened an emergency meeting of either the NEC, that is National Executive Committee, which is the highest decision making of the MBA. And after extensive discussion, we would have a communique and arrive at such. Now, in developed systems where people perceive the system to be fair, when you are accused, normally in those areas, if they are listening to what is on, they will believe it is the same system they operate. Their system is, before you get to the media, you have a lot of information within you. Today, the system we operate is we get to the media first. We now start looking for information. So if we, if we take some decisions that will be a problem tomorrow, it means that tomorrow somebody doesn't like your face, he accuses you of corruption, and you must step aside. That is an area, and once we enter that area, even the innocent ones who refuses to bend may be asked to step aside. I'll give you one example. Among the judges that were, that were busted on the fateful day, some of them, they, got, they claimed to get some money from them, huge sums of money. And one of them, I understand, they got about 7,000 Naira in his house. And when they got 7,000 Naira in his house, there was no other thing they got. We had also seen a lot of the petitions and their responses. These petitions and responses, like in the one I'm talking about that they got 7,000 in his house, the, the petition against him was that he collected money from one of, the, one of the suspects. And they mentioned a particular date in their petition. They said the money was collected on the 25th of June, or rather on the 25th, yes, of July, this year. And the judge in his response said that he was in India on the said date, on medical attention, which many other judges were. Or we are also to attend. Now, there was an alibi. Would you ask him to step aside? Well, how did the DSS not confirm that story? Or how did DSS not confirm their information before busting on him? So, you see that you may have ten persons, you may even have one who may not be part of it, or you may have three or four or five who may not be part of it. So, if it's overseas or if it's uh, in more developed countries, you see that before they enter your house, they would have been able to check all the things, plug all the loopholes, so that once you're busted, people will say, yes, look at what happened in Ghana. In the case of Ghana, he was, uh, he was uh, a journalist. And that journalist was a lawyer. He practiced law for two years and was not happy with the situation. He went and started recording.